Might the Ebola virus spread outside of Africa? If so, what do we need to be doing to prepare for that? So if you're a doctor or a nurse or a frontline healthcare worker working in a big city that's got an international airport, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video. Also, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the history of Ebola virus epidemics. I'm gonna be telling you a story that nobody seems to be talking about. I know about it because I was there at the time, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to this Global Health YouTube channel. My name is Greg Martin. So this YouTube channel is all about global health and we've got videos on things like epidemiology, global health ethics, how to find and use data, and things like how to find a job in the global health space. Just a quick announcement, we've now started a crowdfunding campaign to support this channel. So click on the orange icon that's on the screen right now or click on the link in the description below and you can find out more about how you can support this channel going forwards. So let's jump right in and talk about the Ebola virus. What we're seeing in West Africa today is without question the worst Ebola outbreak this world has ever seen. The virus has now spread through Guinea, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and it's now in Nigeria. It's gotten to the city of Lagos, a densely populated city, home to 21 million people. Now there's been a lot of media coverage that explores the idea of whether or not this virus might spread out of Africa into places like Europe and the US. Most of these articles and reports have been saying that it's extremely unlikely. I actually think that the likelihood of this virus doing a long distance spread is actually increasing in terms of its probability day by day. And I'd also like to point out, which none of these articles are, that there is actually historical precedence for this sort of thing happening. None of the articles that I've read make any mention of the name Marilyn Lahana, and her case represents the most important case study when thinking about this kind of threat. Okay, but first, let's just take a moment and think about the variables that we need to consider when trying to understand the risks of a long distance spread of the Ebola virus. The first is of course the sheer number of people that have the disease, and in this case it's unprecedented. And the second is, do people that are infected have access to international airports? And in this case the answer is yes. And the third, and, and this is important, is the incubation period. And the incubation period is the time between getting infected and becoming symptomatic. And in the case of an Ebola virus infection, you're not infectious, in other words you don't pass the disease on until you're actually symptomatic. Now for Ebola virus, the incubation period can be anything from two days to 21 days. In other words, you may be asymptomatic. You may not have any symptoms. You may not even know that you're infected for up to three weeks before you start showing signs and symptoms of the disease. And three weeks is a lot of time for a person to be able to get on a plane and go to another country or a big city like London or New York. And finally, there's the question of motivation. Of course it's possible for a person unknowingly to get on a plane and go to another country and spread the disease that way. But might a person who knows they've been exposed to the Ebola virus deliberately get on a plane and go to another country? And why would they do that? And this is where the case of Marilyn Lahana comes in. In 1996, a doctor from Gabon who had been infected with the Ebola virus and in fact was already showing signs and symptoms, traveled to Johannesburg in South Africa because that's where he believed that he would get the best possible treatment at that time. Now Ebola virus has a 90% mortality rate, so you can understand why a person might want to go get treatment in Johannesburg as opposed to getting it in Gabon. He didn't, however, tell the health authorities or the doctors treating him that he had been exposed to the Ebola virus. And before a diagnosis could be made, the disease had actually spread to one of the nursing staff that was treating him. Her name was Marilyn Lahana. Marilyn was admitted to the Johannesburg General Hospital. At the time, I was working as a medical student in the Department of Hematology who were involved with treating her. And unfortunately, Marilyn Lahana died of the disease. Interestingly, the doctor from Gabon who had come down to Johannesburg, he survived. So the point that I'm making is that the long distance spread of an Ebola virus infection is not just a hypothetical scenario. This has actually happened and we need to be thinking about what measures need to be put in place in case this sort of thing happens again. Now the spread of Ebola virus in an industrialized country will be very different from what we're seeing in Africa. But wherever it lands, the people most at risk will be family members, other close contacts, and of course healthcare workers. So frontline healthcare workers like junior doctors and nurses. And so while these countries are talking about the fact that they've got a national strategy in place, I'm not hearing from any of the junior doctors that I speak to that anybody's being prepared, nobody is being told what to look out for and what to do if they bump into a case where they suspect it might be Ebola. And so while I'm not an infectious disease control expert, I can tell you about a few of the things that you need to be doing and thinking about if your hospital hasn't taken you aside and told you this already. Firstly, if you take a history, make sure you take a travel history, find out where the person's been. If they've been in any of the countries that I talked about earlier where the virus is spreading, you need to be on high alert. Also, keep your eye on this epidemic. It may spread to other countries in West Africa and you're gonna to need to include those countries in your history taking too. In terms of the symptoms that the person may complain about, you're not just looking for like hemorrhagic fever with people bleeding out of their eyes. In the early stage of this disease, it can present with flu-like symptoms. So things like fever, weakness, muscle pain, headaches and sore throats. Later on, they'll develop vomiting and diarrhea and organ failure and bleeding. So if you're seeing a patient and they've got a travel history from any of the countries where this epidemic is happening, and they're complaining even of mild symptoms like a headache or fever, 
do not touch that patient. This thing is far more contagious than anything you've come across. It's not good enough just to wear gloves and think that you're taking universal precautions. What you wanna do is stop what you're doing, ask the patient to wait there, and you go and find the most senior doctor you can and tell them that you think that this might be a case of Ebola. Just to give you a sense of just how infectious this disease is, a German hospital has agreed to treat a patient with Ebola virus from the current epidemic. This patient will be kept behind three airlocks. The room will be kept at low pressure so that no air can escape. The doctors and nurses treating the patient will have complete protective bodysuits with their own oxygen supply. These bodysuits will be replaced and burned every three hours. So trust me, wearing a pair of gloves is not good enough. Look, I'm not trying to be alarmist or melodramatic, and I hope that this epidemic dies out soon. But I do feel that we need to be thinking about and planning for a scenario in which healthcare workers and members of the public are at risk and we need to have the right protocols in place even if nothing happens. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. Please forward it on to anybody that you feel may find it useful. And remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already. And please do support the channel by clicking on the Patreon icon that's on the screen right now. And just a quick announcement, this YouTube channel will soon be hosting a live weekly global health news roundup. So if you'd like to be kept informed as to when these shows will be, click on the link in the description below. That'll let you subscribe to our newsletter and we'll keep you up to date. Until next time, take care and be safe.